What's up, travelers? Ah, beat you to it. What's up, Ooh. travelers? It's a Liz. And Derek. From Means to Travel. And today we are back in the Portsmouth area, back at our Airbnb. And we decided just to do some quick little trips around Portsmouth and kind of to nearby areas. We're going to start at Port Chester Castle which is another English heritage site for us today. And then we're gonna go to the town of Winchester, which has a ton of history. So we'll talk to you when we get there, but first we're gonna go check out this place. We started trying to figure out how to get into the castle and man we would have been terrible medieval invaders because we cannot even find the front entrance so um, I just crossed like this river here it's not really a moat because I think it's natural um, unless you think it's a moat oh yeah maybe because it does kind of go like around this castle here um, again not a good invader don't even know my moats from my rivers um, so I think we're going to go walk around the path in the opposite direction and wish us luck. Okay, after walking around the entire castle, we finally found the entrance. <laughs> okay. Also, um, their cafe has tapas, which I was really impressed by. Okay, so here we go, walking in. Here's the entrance. I'm pretty sure we parked right over there, and then and then just did the the whole grounds. We uh we can assure Queen Elizabeth that nobody is trying to invade other than us today. Of France to protect his land, foolish fellow. So he began to amass a huge force here at Porchester. Ships were built and repaired, and supplies of all kinds brought here and stockpiled. One knight in ten throughout the country was ordered to attend. An armada was formed, and on the 1st of May, 1205, John took up residence here in the castle. The preparations were made, the soldiers were ready and willing. But unfortunately, the barons were not. Many of them had land in France as well as England. And that made things a bit complicated for them. All right, we are entering the keep here at Porchester Castle. It's so tall. <laughs> really cool. We just listened to the audio guide on our phones, which has tons of history. Porchester Castle holds a commanding position at the head of a natural harbor, making it the perfect location for anyone seeking to control the surrounding region. The Romans first constructed a castle here in the 3rd century AD as one of a line of coastal fortifications known as the Forts of the Saxon Shore, protecting Roman Britons from marauding Saxon pirates. The castle continued to be occupied throughout the Saxon era, all the way up to the Norman conquest in 1066. At that point, the existing Norman structure began to take shape. Ultimately, Port Chester became a royal castle under Henry II and remained property of the crown until 1632. In the intervening years, it became a sometimes royal residence, staging ground for repeated invasions of France, and the site of a baronial mutiny. After being sold by the Crown, Porchester Castle began to be used to house prisoners of war, first housing Dutch prisoners in 1655, and later prisoners in the Napoleonic War from 1793 to 1815. 
During this time, Port Chester housed up to 8,000 POWs at any given time. Hey, so we just toured through the keep here, and now we're in um, the inner Bailey area. As you can see, there's nobody here with us. <laughs> um, there are a few people in um, when we first got here in like the museum area in the keep, but now we're just enjoying these old castle ruins and taking photos. And we're about to go through the shop here before heading back out and hopefully heading over to Winchester. So it's been a really cool area. Um, lots of history plaques. And what I was really delighted to see is there's like a whole room dedicated to the history of the Caribbean or black prisoners that were sent here during the war between Britain and France in like the late 1700s, early 1800s. So it was just really cool to learn just some black history while here too. All right, cheers. <laughs> here at the castle we're about to head over to Winchester but I wanted to just say a few things first so from a logistics standpoint we brought our own lunch um, we actually brought this lunch box from the US so that we way, bought it actually in Moab yeah um, in when Utah. we were doing like the national parks over there and we realized that on big road trips like we were doing then that it's great to be able to bring a packed lunch so we put everything in the like the little icy thing in the freezer and yeah, it's kept everything really cool. So we have grapes and a sandwich and a little bit of candy. And I also put a roll of paper towels in here to act as napkins for us. So just some little road trip tips for if you're driving around the UK or anywhere. Also wanted to say that it was really cool to talk to the woman who is like working kind of the front entrance and shop because mm -hmm. so we're here on a Wednesday and it's a really nice day outside so a really great day to go to the English heritage sites but there was nobody here and so we were talking to her a little bit about that and she was saying like this is one of the best years to go to these types of sites because a lot of it is outdoor still and they have hand sanitizer everywhere and um, have like the social distancing requirements and on days like this especially on the weekdays there's nobody around yeah. um, and she was even saying that she's like stonehenge, dip to stonehenge She's yeah, like, she, nobody's there. She's Go. like, normally in the summer times, they have 11,000 visitors a day. And this year it's significantly less. Mm -hmm. So she's like, definitely get there while you guys are here in the UK. So we will have to do that yeah. at some point. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're about to eat our sandwiches now and just wanted to give those little tips and words of advice. So this is a two lane road. Um, and it's beautiful. We're in South Downs Park. Oh no. Whoa. There we go. Oh my god. See you folks, that's how it's done. This is so scary. <laughs> Do the wave. Oh my god, stop, Darren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the car is like, you're going way too fast. Alright, I am a scaredy cat, but this is Derek's third day driving in the UK, so. Sign 20 of plenty.
laughing at me and making fun of me. <laughs> and I'm having I visions feel, of what the next two months are going to be like. I'm so scared. <laughs> right now we're riding behind a semi-truck that's at least setting the pace in a way that makes me feel slightly better. Winchester, built in 1450. Now it's a restaurant. Art supplies always make me feel so happy. Hubs always make me feel happy. This guy, Alfred the Great, is one of the powerhouses of English history, credited with stitching together what would eventually become the Kingdom of England, or the Land of the Angles. It was his descendants that would make Winchester the first capital city of Anglo-Saxon England and cement its place in the history books. The area surrounding Winchester has a much more ancient heritage, however, having been the site of three Iron Age hill forts and becoming an important cultural center for the British Belgae tribe prior to the Roman conquest of Britain. It continued to thrive under the Roman occupation, and by the time of the Roman abandonment, was one of the largest cities on the island. Though not the largest, or even second largest, city in Hampshire today, Winchester continues to be an important urban center in the region, acting as Hampshire's county town. Today, Winchester exudes a relaxed atmosphere, hosting one of the largest farmers markets in England on the second and last Sunday of each month. So we made it to Winchester and we're walking along kind of this main uh, pedestrian area in the downtown and it's 5 36 right now p.m and everything's closed which is a huge bummer i know that like a lot of smaller towns in the uk you kind of have to shut early and things might close at like five or six but like everything is already closed here except for the restaurants so I think we missed out on a little bit of fun just browsing and stuff, but we get to do a little window shopping and then head back to Portsmouth. So hope you guys really like this montage of our walk through Winchester. This popular bronze statue, imaginatively titled Horse and Rider, is one of three cast by world-renowned sculptor Elizabeth Frink in 1974. Another of the trio stands in London at the entrance to the Royal Academy of Arts. As the day drew to a close, we made our way towards our last stop, Winchester Cathedral. Although it was unfortunately closed by the time we arrived, it is famous for being the final resting place of Jane Austen, as well as the inspiration for the cathedral in Ken Follett's Pillars of the Earth. It's like you're a height. <laughs> And we're at our last stop of the day. We're at Winchester Cathedral here in the town of Winchester. And um, we're here right about dusk. So it's just us and a few other maybe local college revelers uh, hanging out around here. 
Uh, but it's a really, really pretty cathedral and has a lot of great kind of fall foliage trees if you walk around the grounds. And this town itself also has um, a college, so we've been walking around and seeing a lot of younger people here. You can kind of hear them. <laughs> uh, so it gives that a little bit more of a young feel from a lot of the other places that we've been touring around. Um, so it's a really cool place to just come visit, and I really wish we had a little bit more time here in Winchester, but back to Port. So Liz, what are we doing here? Searching for a restroom for here. See a toilet? Use a toilet. I didn't know where you went. I got sidetracked by a river. Typical story. Alright, it is time for me to drive home for the first time in the rain in England. Woo! I'm Party. Scared. Party on. Hey travelers, don't forget to subscribe and let's hang out more. Here are some links to other helpful travel videos on my channel and press that notification bell so you don't miss any new and awesome travel videos to come.